Jesus, why is this fucking show so loud? Please welcome CEO and Square Enix America's Square Enix. Enix. Bill Rogers. Good morning. Good morning, and for fans joining around the world, good afternoon and good evening, too. Welcome to the Square Enix E3 conference. We haven't done one of these for a while, so it's great to be here. Is it really called Square Enix? Will be a <coughs> next 12 months <coughs> for us, for you, and for our industry as a whole. Just before we jump into the games, I'd like to take a moment or two to talk about the journey we've been on at Square Enix. Because I think, and I hope you agree, you've seen a difference in how we've been working. We've seen the massive work undertaken by the Final Fantasy XIV team in recreating their gaming world, right for the game and of course its players. Mm -hmm. We try to be more open-minded in how we support projects and teams, whether it's things like helping the Just Cause 2 multiplayer mod, or trusting the creators of Life is Strange and how characters and themes in games <laughs> Yeah, sorry I missed the Nintendo conference. And I got some of it on my way home, but I had to do something kind of unexpected, so... As you've seen with the recent Final Rip. Fantasy XV demo. And we're determined to continue listening and improving. So, welcome. Great to have you here live in LA and fans joining via the streams online as we share more information about our upcoming titles. Over the next hour or so, the creators of our games, characters, and worlds will be here to personally introduce you to their work. Yeah, I'm working. Is, that, is that better now? To make their game the next great game. Whether it's the dystopian future of Deus Ex Mankind Divided or the enduring legacy of Final Fantasy, our talented teams and studios from around the world have an unforgettable experience for you. Now, we started the show, you had a quick look at Just Cause 3. One of the most explosive titles, literally, you Literally. See here, and one I know that will be played for a long time to come. We only have to look back at Just Cause 2 and how, five years on, hundreds of thousands of gamers were having fun each month playing with the game. This time, we promised to provide longer and stronger support for these games after release. And I personally I'm see Just Cause standing side by side with other iconic gaming worlds. I can't wait for you to get your hands on it later this year. It's an example of our belief that we work with some of the cheese. world's most talented teams to provide the platform and support to deliver on their creative visions. And I'm excited to report in its first year our Square Enix Collective Initiative has supported new talent too. Ah. Getting our dedicated Square Enix community to support and vote on new games is just part of our ambition to involve you more in the work that we do and provide new routes into the industry for new development talent. I'm sure and I hope to see some of this talent headlining... I'm doing for the, the Twitch future. channel. Taking Does all these matter? things together, we're proud that Moonster Square Hunters. Enix today yeah. is unique in the industry in terms of the variety Five years and the way. The fuck? of experiences we create, the global appeal of our games, and of course, our amazing fans. It's important to us, and I believe it's important for you too. Ultimately, we're privileged to entertain gamers across the globe. Yeah, from what I can and tell from the um, Nintendo conference, there's like a lot of like remakes. But that's enough from me. And like thanks for listening. Newer games. Like the Zelda game looked pretty cool. And now, but I'd like I didn't to really see Roland, much else besides that. Like Mario Avalon Maker, we already knew about. Holy World, we already knew about. Just Cause Three. Thank you. Um, hey. I don't know what else do we know about. The Fire Emblem game, I thought we knew Hi about everyone. it, but I don't remember. I'm Roland Lesterlin, the game director on Just Cause 3. At Avalanche Studios, we right, pride we'll ourselves on making the... huge open world games. We're playing. The Square Enix feed. Square Enix. Plenty epic destruction. 
we've upgraded the grapple hook. We've added multiple grapple lines and the ability to directly control the grapple's tension, vastly increasing the cascade of explosions. In short, we want to give you all the tools you need to create hours and hours of incredible action in our Mediterranean-inspired world. Yeah, I don't really care much for Just Cause. It's a game Building I think it's like boring way too quickly. Building Just Cause 400-square-mile sky-to-seabed action adventure is no small task. But it's one we've dedicated ourselves to delivering. And we're really pleased today to be able to announce that Just Cause 3 will be launching globally on December 1st this year on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Oh, that's great. Next. We can't wait to see all the amazing stunts and incredible action moments you'll create with the game when you get your hands on it. But for now, we want to show you what the new Just Cause is all about. So get ready. This is Just Cause 3. <laughs> Square Enix presents. Oh, yeah, Paper Mario game. Uh, hopefully, they'll redeem that series after the last fucking sticker star was garbage. Just cause three. Just cause three is a huge open world game with over 400 square miles of complete freedom from sky to seabed, with a large arsenal of weaponry, gadgets, and vehicles. Prepare to unleash chaos in the most creative and explosive ways you can imagine. Rico Rodriguez returns to his mother's homeland, the beautiful Mediterranean island of Medici, to liberate it from the brutal dictatorship of General Di Ravello. Obsessed with power, Di Ravello rules Medici with an iron grip. Iron grip, you mean iron fist? Building huge military structures and leading a strong defense force. But why does this island republic need such a large military? Di Ravello has his eyes on much bigger things than just Medici. He sees global domination as his ultimate conquest. Rico, driven by the desire to return Medici to its once beautiful and peaceful past, goes about bringing down Di Ravello's armies and military bases by any means possible. Rico's tools of the trade include an updated grapple hook, which can be used anywhere in the world, to scale great heights as a weapon or for moments of awesome stunt action. Now players can deploy multiple grapple tethers. I, I don't know. I, I guess that it just of seems chaos and destruction. Uh, Combined so -so. with a new manual retract function, the grapple becomes even more powerful and versatile. Fucking Slingshot vehicles Twitter. into checkpoints. Attach soldiers to exploding fuel tanks. Smash helicopters into the ground. You can also hook onto objects and tear them apart, and even construct wrecking balls. The possibilities are endless. The parachute is now a far more stable platform for combat, helping Rico strike his enemies with great precision, using one or two-handed weapons. This allows the combination between the grapple and parachute to be a highly effective combat force, something that no other game can do. On top of this, there's the all-new wingsuit, which allows for total freedom of the skies oh, thanks, and Facebook. completes Rico's aerial abilities. Rico also carries a gun rack of machine guns, rifles, handguns, grenades, rocket launchers, and unlimited C4, creating spectacular kills and awesome explosions. Medici is filled with over 80 land, sea, and air vehicles. From sports cars to jet planes, via monster trucks and tractors, each one modeled in incredible detail. Vehicles are a complex set of hinged parts. Star Fox? Zones, I don't know. It's just a remake of the original tanks. game, so... With, like, Builders, some added stuff. bases, and gas stations all blow up in unique physics-based chains of destruction for amazing moments of unpredictable chaos. Very stomach flash. All this comes together in Just Cause 3's incredible missions, where you tear down the general's bases of power, liberate towns in the open world, and gain access to new vehicles, weapons, and rebel facilities as you progress. D. Ravello knows where you are, and he's sending a big old army to kill you. Big old army to kill you? He knows where you are, because you fucking blow up all this shit all the time. How can you fucking miss him? 
all of which are tracked online for high score bragging rights. These include races, scrapyard scrambles, classic gun ranges, wingsuit courses, crash the bomb, and destruction frenzies. Complete them to unlock new mods that upgrade Rico's explosive capabilities and vehicles. Giving players endless ways to cause epic action, destruction, and chaos across 400 square miles of beautiful Mediterranean paradise. Just Cause 3 revolutionizes the open world genre, one massive explosion at a time. Square Enix and Avalanche Studios will set the world on fire December 1st. Please welcome to the stage, Business Division 6 producer, Yosuke Saito. Yosuke. Hello, uh, my name is Yosuke Saito from Business Division 6, as I was just introduced. Uh, I asked for some time today to announce the production of a certain uh, new title that we're working on. <laughs> this project's still very early in the development, but we would like to take the opportunity to announce it today. So, so first, please take a look at this brand new footage. Thank you. What is this shit? Oh shit, Platinum Games, boys. Don't make cry. Near? Oh, I didn't know he did near. People from near worked on this game. Near two. I call it, boys. Title, they're like near blah blah blah. <laughs> That's pretty hype. So, how was that? Uh, it's a new near game, and the platform is the PlayStation 4. Uh, production's just begun on this. But uh, just as we showed now, we really are taking on this challenge with an incredible lineup of development talent. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce two key individuals in the project who have made it here to the conference today. The director, Mr. Yoko Otaro, and Atsushi Inaba from Platinum Games, who will be working on the development with us. <laughs> that was that. Uh, dude, what are you wearing? <laughs> Is he a moon man? Hello everyone. I'm the director of the new project, Mr. Taro Yoko. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's now five years since the previous uh, installment of the series. Uh, but we continue to receive lots of messages from fans, both in Japan and across the globe. So I get the sense that the game really has been loved by so many. 
So to everyone who supported Nier, I thank you heartfelt. So after hearing about the production of the new Nier project from Saito-san here, and then hearing that he was able to ask Platinum Games and the character designer Akihiko Yoshida to contribute to the production, I felt that the quality of the game had already been virtually guaranteed. It feels like I really don't have anything I need to do here. But if I say things like that, then a lot of people are going to get angry at me. So I'd just like to say I'm going to do my very best on this title. So thank you to everyone. <laughs> He's like straight up, like, oh shit, I can't see through this fucking thing. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Atsushi Inaba from Platinum Games, and we will be handling the development of the new Nier title. We Look really didn't guy. think that this type of collaboration would ever be possible prior to being approached by Square Enix about it. The request that we received was to instill new strength in the Nier franchise by levering Platinum Games' area of special expertise, which is action. Look, you're rising too, man. We accepted it, because if that was the case, then we felt that there was a lot that we could contribute to a new project. This title has amassed support of many passionate fans around the world, so we feel a great sense of responsibility <laughs> towards them. But we're not really worried about keeping the new game true to the spirit of Nier, as Mr. Yoko here is on board directing the game. Currently, all of our staff who love the Nier franchise are really hard at work developing the game in full force alongside Mr. Yoko. It'll take a while before it's ready, but we hope you can look forward to seeing the outcome. Thank you. I wish, Lux, I wish. Caps like this, what kind of fucking clap is that? Lastly, I really want to tell everyone that I myself have really wanted to develop a new Nier title for a very long time. But I felt it would be very difficult to respond to the sheer passion that our fans have for this title if we couldn't do it with everything we had. Therefore, it's taken a very long time, but I'm sincerely very happy and very proud that we were able to announce this fantastic new game today and the development team. Thank you. Even the subtitle of the game, is still, the game is still very much. But we should be able to provide but further updates provide regarding the title updates around autumn this year. year. Around autumn so this please year. look forward to any so further updates, on, to any further updates on, that on that day. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, I don't know why there's a fucking echo. That's weird. Why that suddenly starts playing? But I've got to continue. I finally feel a sense of purpose again. Like I'm doing what I was meant to do. Some kind of marker. Well, it's weird. Why the fuck did it start playing now? It's been like playing for the last like ten minutes or so. We already saw Tomb Raider, I think, earlier, didn't we? Incredible. This is it. Why does it sound like she's talking to a toilet? Like, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Please welcome game director Tim of Crystal Dynamics for Rise of the Tomb Raider, Ryan Horton. Hi, everyone. My name's Brian Horton, I'm the game director on Tomb Raider. Yesterday, at the Microsoft press briefing, we shared our gameplay world premiere for Rise of the Tomb Raider. Because Tomb Raider is all about Lara and her journey, we always want to make her feel as human and believable as possible. Today, we'll share some of the techniques that we use to achieve things that were simply weren't possible until now. In this exclusive, behind-the-scenes look, filmed at our studio, you'll hear from some of the talented people who bring Lara to life. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, our goal is to create the most believable characters in games. The talented artists and animators at Crystal Dynamics have built Lara from the ground up to realize this vision. Part of creating the most realistic character that we possibly can well, are things like details. It's pretty early. So, <clears throat> pores on the skin. We're talking pretty about early in California time. Things, where snowflakes would land on that eyelash. 
trash. I mean, things that really get into the nitty gritty of what makes something feel very tangible, gives it a lot of character. Those are the things that we're able to do it's now. Nice so far, the first imagine. read, which is Lara's main silhouette, we want that secondary read. We want to get in there really tight and be able to see all those little tiny things that make her very, very unique. It's the imperfections. Even some scars from the last game have been transported over to the new model. We want to show character and progression of time and show that she's gone through some things to get here. We first started with scans, uh, and we used that data to get make sure the proportions were right, that the cold logic was right on her clothes. And then we added our artistic touch to it, and we added a whole lot of details to it, so we can actually look at her skin. You'll see the pores, you, you look at the clothes, you see all the micro details on the, on the clothes. So we added a lot to that uh, to make her come to life. Whenever she gets into a fight, she can get dirty or she can get bloody. When she's out in the snow, she'll actually accumulate snow on her clothes. So she fits into every environment that she's in. We're able to actually capture the nuances of facial movement and uh, she really comes to life and it is so much better than the bone driven system that we used in the past and this all adds to the realism of her acting. <clears throat> at Crystal, we look at every granular detail from her anatomy to her garments to her motion in order to deliver a believable and lifelike Lara Croft. These goals become a reality as we see Lara navigate the mysterious catacombs of the Prophet's tomb. <laughs> so there we have it. We hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look at the making of Lara Croft. Rise of the Tomb Raider features a beautiful, hostile world filled with massive gameplay spaces with challenge and things to discover. Lara will use her environment to outsmart her enemies, crafting improvised weapons and explosives. Rest assured, we're putting the tombs back into Tomb Raider, giving you an exclusive first look at the Prophet's tomb gives you a glimpse of that. We hope to show you more in the coming months, and thanks again. Have a great E3. Please welcome to the stage, Square Enix Montreal, head of studio, Square Patrick Enix. No. Patrick No. Oh. Thank you. Good morning, bonjour, how are you gozaimasu? Uh, my name is Patrick No, head of studio at Square Enix Montreal. We are hard at work bringing some of the best IPs from Square Enix. Yeah, I should fucking move to Canada. It seems to be pretty hot Our for ambition gaming. is to craft fresh, premium, award-winning experiences designed specifically for mobile and tablet. Oh, fantastic. Our first releases, Hitman Go and Hitman Sniper, are two diversely original takes on the same franchise, but they're, they're a testament to the creativity and quality that we strive for in crafting true AAA mobile games. Unique concepts, intuitive controls, and iconic visuals. Oh, no. When we introduced the Go concept with Hitman Go, it was a celebration of the franchise distilled to its core. Today, we're bringing this concept to another beloved franchise. We are extremely excited uh, to bring you our next inspiration for Go. It's a celebration of adventure, distilled to its purest, yeah, pretty much. most elegant one-touch form. It's Lara Croft, have you never seen her before? A turn-based experience sent in a long-forgotten world 
delivering gorgeous visual, mesmerizing soundtrack, and challenging gameplay all at your fingertips. This is Lara Croft Go. We can't wait to show you more. Have a great E3. Thank you. Thank you. Show us more that's not fucking mobile games. Thanks. That's weird. Please welcome to the stage, Kingdom Hearts series, executive producer, Shinji Hashimoto. I wonder what game this is going to be. Kingdom Hearts 3, maybe? What's up, motherfuckers? Hey, hey, hello. <laughs> hello, my name is whatever. I'm the producer of Kingdom Hearts. I apparently don't have a translator today. Kingdom Hearts is a really cool game, and uh... Hope you guys look forward to it. Long ago, we looked upon a foreboding sky. The memory of the star that threatened all. Burns eternal in our hearts. Sorry, Jethro. In its wake came an age of silence. Yet with each fond remembrance, we knew those encountered were not forgotten. That someday we would see them again. Perhaps it was no more than wishful thinking. Okay, where's our translation, Jethro? I'm waiting. I'm waiting, Jethro. But after the long calm, what did he say? There are now the beginnings of a stir. The reunion at hand may bring joy, it may bring fear, but let us embrace whatever it brings. For they are coming back. At last, the promise has been made. Oh. So here's Final Fantasy VII again. Let's watch it. Yes. Years of anticipation, we are very happy to announce that we will be remaking Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation 4. At this time, we're only announcing that we're doing a remake, <laughs> so please stay tuned for more detailed information in the future. Furthermore, last year we announced that we would be bringing the PC version of Final Fantasy VII to the PlayStation 4, and that we would be releasing it around spring 2015. We'd, we'd really like to thank you for your continued patience, as we have to ask that you wait just a little bit longer until winter this year. But additionally, we would like to take the opportunity to inform you that we're also bringing Final Fantasy VII to iOS. And we're hoping to deliver that one to you before the end of summer this year. Make sure you buy your DLC so material and all that bullshit that fucking iOS will try to sell to you. 
fucking scum. About the Kingdom Hearts series. First, let's take a look at this new video. Also, why they bring the PC version? Why don't they just bring the PS1 version over? I don't understand that, but okay. Oh, it's a fucking mobile game, boys. This is Kingdom Hearts 3, guys. <laughs> How awful would that be? You get a fucking mobile game. The Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key would be made available in Japan. And we're very happy to announce that we'll be bringing this game to North America as well, making it the first Kingdom Hearts title dedicated for smartphones. Unchained Key depicts a story that links in to Kingdom Hearts 3. And it presents a convenient way to enjoy the beautiful worlds of Disney right there on your smartphone. We hope that you can look forward to seeing it. Okay, moving along. There we go. Discuss the title. I think we've all been waiting for Kingdom Hearts Three. But rather than having me talk about it. I thought it would be much better if we watched some actual footage of the game. But before that, we'd like to show you a video message from some very special guests. So please take a look at this. Oh my god! Hi Kingdom Hearts fans. Hi Disney fans. I'm Greg Coleman. I'm the Vice President of Worldwide Marketing and Franchise Management here at the Walt Disney Animation Studios. And I'm joined with my dear friend, Master Xehanort. No, actually, I'm Roy Connolly, and I am a producer here at Walt Disney Animation Studios. There is an amazing collaboration going on right now between Disney and Square Enix for Kingdom Hearts 3. We're working with the best animated storytellers and the best game developers. The Kingdom Hearts mobile game exclusive on the iOS, coming to the Android when we feel like it. Because fuck you. The film that I produce that I love. Just like that fucking be the first Fallout one game. In the series. It's called Tangled. We have this amazing partnership between Square Enix and Disney, and the fact that Square Enix is really trying to bring it to life with the same integrity that we brought it to life with, it's going to be cool. There's a lot more to tell, and we're just going to give you a little bit today, but we couldn't be more excited. Uh, just show us the fucking game. Holy shit. Master Xenohort. We're really honored to have such a great message from two key members of Walt Disney Animation Studios. As our guest mentioned, we're introducing a brand new world into the game. So, without any further ado, up 
but I, I think Roy is actually here today. Roy from the video. So, hey Roy, thank you for coming today. Please give Roy a big hand. So, without any further ado, here is the world premiere of the latest footage from Kingdom Hearts 3. Have you heard of the ancient Keyblade War? Yeah, the Master's favorite story. So, you know the Lost Masters. They're the ones who started the Keyblade War. Never heard of them. You can drop the facade. Light train's coming, boys. <laughs> nice, the fucking teacups. On that land shall darkness prevail and light expire. The future, it's already been written. Who's to say I can't change it? And maybe light will prevail. There is more light than meets the eye. You might be surprised. Oh, I hope so. So what did you think? When I first saw that video, I was personally quite surprised by the evolution that the Kingdom Hearts series has undergone. And the team continues to work really hard on its development, so we can continue to bring more surprises to all of you. Your continued support and encouragement is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Could you please bear with me just a little bit longer? Since I'm actually involved with several projects at the moment, and there's one more that I'd like to bring to you. <laughs> it's called World of Final Fantasy. You can see the title right here. And we introduced this World of Final Fantasy yesterday at the Sony conference as well. Let's take a look at this trailer first. Cold. As memories lost are slowly drawn back in, two siblings embark on an adventure unlike any before. Welcome to Grimoire, a world of the weest of beings. Weebest. Here you can befriend adorably familiar monsters and turn tiny enough to jump on for a ride or turn tall enough for them to ride on you. Join Why forces they say ride with on you? adorably that sounds so familiar heroes and heroines and witness a most peculiar story unfold. 
They may be small in stature, but the fate that awaits them is grand indeed. This is the size of a new Final Fantasy, the beginning of a new world, and a tale with countless encounters. World of Final Fantasy. So, as you just saw, this title takes place in a completely new universe, very different from those seen in previous Final Fantasy titles. And I'd like to introduce you now to the new director, who was, we felt, a perfect fit for this new title. So, please welcome the director of World of Final Fantasy, Mr. Hiroki Chiba. Chiba. Okay. It's like Shiba. Chiba. World of Final Fantasy. Hello everyone. So, uh, I am the director of World of Final Fantasy, Hiroki Chiba. Final Fantasy is really central to the history of Square Enix. And from this long established IP, many products have been developed in many different ways. We really are truly grateful that this IP, that Final Fantasy, has been loved for so many years. However, we also found that this long history that the series has has become a factor in what may be distancing some new people from experiencing the joy of Final Fantasy. So, with that in mind, I identified three challenges to address in the planning of this project, with the hope that a wider audience would get to know and love what Final Fantasy is all about, and how wonderful it truly can be. First of all, I wanted it to be a game that everyone of any age or gender could play. Secondly, I want to bring out a completely new visual experience. And thirdly, to create a new game system that anyone can play that's both simple and very deep at the same time. First, we thought about the possibility of creating a game that both small children and their parents can play, and share and enjoy together. And here we really have a chance to realize that that kind of wonderful experience with this excellent IP, with Final Fantasy. So, in order to realize this vision, we really are challenging ourselves to create a completely new visual representation for the game that's never been done before with Final Fantasy series. Something like the excitement of adventuring through a world of toys and figurines. I assume everyone, both adults and children alike, have wanted to dive into the world of their toys at least once in their lifetime. And we really want to make that into a reality. And the one feature I'd really like you to pay attention in the new game is this here. Well, I think it's not that shit. I think it's more of like, you don't want to have like, only male protagonists, and it's like, oh, well, male protagonists only. Like, I don't want to play this game because I'm a girl. I guess that's what he's trying to like, get at. So having a female and male protagonist, it's like, oh, well, you have a female and male, so you can play as either. have been refined over the course of this history at the core of this new system. We aim to offer a new, simple, and yet very deep experience. So, what do you think? I hope that this presentation has piqued your interest in finding out what kind of game this is going to be. We are diligently developing this title so that many people, including those who have never played Final Fantasy before, will feel the same way that we do. And we're currently aiming for a release in 2016, so please look out for it. Thank you, everyone. Please welcome the creative director of IO Interactive, Christian Elverdam. Good yeah, motherfucker! Hi everyone, my name is Christian. I'm the creative director at IO Interactive. And I'm here today to share with you what we've been working on at the studio. Our new game is simply called Hitman. And it marks the start of a very exciting journey for us. Everything we do in this game lays the foundation for the future of the series. The experience will begin on December 8th with a digital release, where we will invite players into a live and ever-expanding world of assassination that will continue to grow, deepen, and evolve over time. It is a game where we release new locations, new missions, and new hits at regular intervals, <laughs> and where we will continuously develop the game and adjust gameplay to create content and events based on player feedback. This is something we're incredibly excited about because it allows us to do things that are bold and entirely new to the Hitman experience. As an example of this, imagine a target appearing for every player in the world, but for a limited time only. Let's say 48 hours. And imagine that you only have 
one chance, the outcome is going to be final. If your target escapes, he's going to be gone forever. And how he dies is how he dies, period. We imagine that the Hitman community will work together to figure out the best ways to deal with these challenges Hit in the man. best possible ways. And we imagine that they Maybe will come together hip, every so. time a new mission or a new location appears. <laughs> and that's just one part of the game. The core wow. of Hitman is a creative stealth action game where you play as Agent 47, a professional assassin in his prime. You perform contract hits on high-profile targets. Can I play as Picard instead? I think that would be pretty cool. World. Like, Picard as an assassin? Paris to the that would be sick, actually. Italy, I'd rather play that than Hitman. Dustin Hustle of the markets in Marrakesh. Freaking Patrick Locations Stewart. are more detailed, more populated, and much larger than ever before. It is a high-definition sandbox where every NPC has a name and every room matters. The game has a pure focus on taking out your targets with complete freedom of approach. Where you go, when you strike, and who you kill is entirely up to you. You have the power and the intelligence of Agent 47 at your fingertips, and it is up to you whether to use brute force or to orchestrate a genuine masterpiece of assassination. With Hitman, we envision a game that will never stop challenging our players. Whether it's from the numerous ways you can take out your targets, to the hundreds of in-mission challenges, to the hundreds of thousands of high-quality, community-created contracts, ass, you'll ass never run out of things to do. Nation. We are incredibly excited to start talking about the game, and I hope you'll enjoy this very first peek at Hitman and our world of assassination. Thank you. There is a world beyond yours. Beyond nations, justice, ethics. It never sleeps. It exists everywhere. And once you enter, there is no going back. You are Agent 47, the world's premier assassin. You can get to anyone, anywhere on the globe. No target is safe. To the public, Viktor Novikov is a well-known oligarch. In reality, he is one of the ringleaders in an enigmatic spy ring called Iago. They deal in secrets that unseat governments and get people killed. And they are about to compromise covert operatives in a people. major European country. Time is of the essence. Final Fantasy game on his iPad. Victor Novikov must be eliminated. <laughs> the essence of a sandbox game like Hitman is freedom of approach. Where you go, how you infiltrate, who you become. Hey, you. Knowing which disguises give you access is key. Okay, then. Get out. But beware. Some individuals are more observant than others. Okay, who are you? Hey, hey, what's up? Be prepared to improvise. Where is he? You see him, anyone? Yeah, where the hell did he go? As you experiment with your playstyle, we lost him. Each hit can go from bloody murder <laughs> to a genuine masterpiece of assassination. <laughs> Complete mastery of a level is rewarded. As your skills evolve over time, so do your options. Prepare equipment in advance and plan the perfect hit. New locations will appear over time. You will travel the world. New missions, new targets. Some targets only ever surface once, for a limited time. When they are gone, they are gone forever. And when you think you're ready to be a contender, Contracts Mode has evolved within the deepest, most expansive Hitman sandboxes yet. Mark your own targets and share them with your friends. Challenge a world of assassins.
Welcome to a world of assassination. It is ever expanding, ever dangerous. It will never stop challenging you. It's the day after my birthday. As the inaugural Space Reconnaissance Force mission launched, mankind took its first steps on worlds beyond its own. One fortunate byproduct of the prolonged conflict with Lazonia is symbology, a power based on written patterns resembling runes. The Ten Wise Men herald an interstellar apocalypse but doom is adverted, thanks to an Earthling mistaken for the Hero of Light. War with the Vendini erupts, sparking a struggle that could end time itself. How this incident helped uncover the Star Ocean's origin will be told for generations, as long as the sands of time continue to fall. Amidst these chronicles, a new entry shall be inscribed. One replete with unexpected encounters and heart-wrenching farewells. One where the fate of a planet hangs in the balance. Integrity of faith, this is... It could be cool. I don't know. I never really got into the Star Ocean series, so I can't really comment. That's a big dude. Hello, everybody. My name is... Uh, and hello there to everyone in Japan watching on live streams. My name is uh, Shuichi Kobayashi, and I'm the producer of Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness. This title was previously announced in April for Japan, and today we would like to announce that the new Star Ocean project is also confirmed to release in North America and Europe on the PlayStation 4. To all the series fans out there, thank you very much for waiting. Naturally, we have none other than Triex, the great developer that has worked on all of the previous installments in the series on board to develop the latest entry in the franchise as well. We've prepared a world-exclusive gameplay trailer to be revealed today at this conference, so please take a look and enjoy. The other guy did not sound the same at all. That one guy had like a really high like voice. Or kind of an odd voice. Uh, this is my, my toy Sakuraba. The music for this, I'm guessing. He's got that little like harp going on.
yeah. Though I heard Star Ocean has very similar combat to Tales games, but I, I don't know. So, how do you like that? It really is an evolved form of a good old school Japanese RPG. Uh, one of the key words for the development of this title is uh, seamlessness. Uh, and with that in mind, rather than creating a trailer that focuses on the more dramatic aspects of the game, we decided to capture and showcase some direct footage that would help you get a better idea of how the game will actually play. Not only do the transitions from exploration to battle in the game occur seamlessly, but other aspects, such as the event scenes, will also occur seamlessly. Well, there's already a few Tales games coming out, Shiv. Um, I mean, it's not, uh, Square Enix doesn't make Tales. We use uh, I don't know if Renamco Vanda has a uh, story. thing or not. But, but this method of storytelling can also be an obstruction to the rhythm of the game, uh, as the player becomes more of a passive observer while gameplay is uh, temporarily halted. For Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness, we're incorporating two types of events scenes. One are dynamic cutscenes that occur as seamless events, and the second are the traditional static cutscenes that focus on staging the story. In developing this title, we aim to improve the playability and excitement of the overall experience, and we really want to break away from that notion that JRPGs are essentially nothing more than movies rather than games. So, as you've seen in the gameplay just now, uh, there will be more characters than ever before who join the party and can fight in battle at the same time. The game system is also very new, although rest assured that in its evolution the system still retains the feel of the real-time action battles that were previously so well received from the series. Uh, furthermore, also note that the gameplay screen is still quite early in development, so the UI and many other elements are still temporary. Uh, and also, additionally, the footage that we showcased today was uh, captured at a frame rate of 30 frames per second. But for the finished game, we're aiming to go for uh, 60 frames per second all the time. And finally, as mentioned in the video, uh, we'd like to announce that this title is scheduled for release in North America and Europe in 2016 and for winter 2015 in Japan. Of course it is. It's so, going to be a little while longer till it's ready, but uh, we hope you can look forward to seeing further updates in the future. Thank you, everyone. Uh, what systems are going to be on? Oh, PS4, okay. Please welcome to the stage Eidos Montreal Head of Studio David Enfossi and Executive Narrative Director for Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Mary DeMarle. Hi everyone, I'm glad to be standing here in front of you today. Five years ago, we presented you with the now criti critically acclaimed, sorry, um, Deus Ex Human Revolution. But today, Eidos Montreal is working hard to deliver you a worthy sequel for both it and the Deus Ex franchise as a whole. As usual, we are not compromising on quality and are constantly striving to meet the high expectations of the fans. To do so, the team behind Deus Ex Human Revolution is back, working with a groundbreaking new game engine, the Dawn engine. The Dawn engine allows us to push the limits of technology, making the world of Deus Ex truly come to life. Mary, could you give us some more details about Deus Ex Man Can Divide It? Thank you, David. I certainly can. Deus Ex Mankind Divided takes place in 2029, which is two years after the end of human revolution. Adam Jensen is back, although both he and the world he's living in have changed. Mechanically augmented people like Jensen have become outcasts in this world. They are feared and even hated by a majority of people. Many are being branded as terrorists and forced to live in AUG-only ghettos under heavy police surveillance. We call it a mechanical apartheid. Jensen isn't living in a ghetto. He's left Seraph Industries and has joined a newly formed division of Interpol known as Task Force 29. His job is to investigate and stop terrorist attacks all over the world. Task At the Force same time, 69. though, he's secretly working as a covert double agent within the task force itself. He believes that a powerful group of men and women known as the Illuminati have created the group in order to serve their own interests. He wants to stop them, and he's teamed up with some hacker activists in order to bring them down. 
To do it, he's going to need some pretty amazing tools in his arsenal. New weapons, new augmentations, like a peps gun that is now hidden inside his mechanical arm. Also, his detachable nanoblades, which can now be used son. as deadly projectiles. These are just two of the enhancements that Jensen has that can really make him become the next stage oh, in mankind's evolution. Of course, <laughs> of course how he uses these tools and how he evolves is totally up to you, the player, to determine. Choices and consequences are at the heart of a Deus Ex experience. And we, with Mankind Divided, are pushing them even further. Choices that you make as a player will not only change how the game is played, but it will also change the story as it unfolds. The actions you take <laughs> as a player will ultimately she determine the end of the game and the end of the story. To put it simply, we want Mankind Divided to be one of the best action RPG experiences out there. And we are working very hard to make sure it happens. Right, David? Totally, Mary. Thank you. Enough talk. Today, I have you? the privilege to present you with the worldwide reveal of our very first in-game trailer. I hope you will enjoy it. surprised to see me. I'm not. This isn't a social call, Rucker. I'm here to take you in. My people and I will resist you. Innocent people died in that bombing today. The augmented are suffering a genocide. It begins with demonizing us, treating us as less than human, exiling us so we are forgotten, and then exterminating us. You're getting pissed enough to end this guy yet. I got a no-kill order. Who'd have thought he'd done enough to warrant extreme prejudice? How dare you speak to me of peace and fairness on behalf of masters who hide in the shadows and murdering without the courage to proclaim their convictions in front of the rest of the world? I suspect there's a power struggle brewing within our organization. Some people inside Ark are less committed to our ideals. Then help me find them. What? His legs just like melted. Somewhere down there, hiding in plain sight, is your real terrorist. I see. Then isn't it time you brought them into the light? Cool stuff, huh? The sex mankind divided would be out in early 2016. The game will be playable on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Please come to our Deus Ex VIP room to experience the full live gameplay, gameplay demo. Pizza. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the show. And now, please welcome President and CEO of Square Enix Holdings, Yosuke Matsuda.
thank you for taking the time to join us here today. Also, thanks to everyone around the world for watching as we kick off E3 2015. As you saw today, and also from the announcement we made yesterday, we possess remarkable content, including our legendary RPG Final Fantasy. Now, I would like to take a moment to introduce the Final Fantasy Portal app. This comprehensive app provides any and all information related to Final Fantasy, and an English version will be coming this summer. We really hope you enjoy the rich content it has to offer. Speaking of RPGs, before I finish, there is one more announcement I'd like to share with you today. RPGs are our major part of Square Enix legacy, including Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Kingdom Hearts. RPG fans from all over the world have supported us along the years, and we are devoted to keep creating incredible new RPG titles. With that, I'm happy to announce the initiation of a new RPG project being developed by a newly established studio. Today, I'd like to share some of the details for the first time. The new studio working on this project is called Tokyo RPG Factory. The name represents our dedication to creating Japanese RPGs. Yeah, he sounds it, Jethro. You can hear like the nervousness in his voice, like the breathing. Maybe, he's, I mean, imagine his English isn't that good. That might be part of why he's nervous. I mean, his English is pretty good comparatively. Maybe it's not like... It's this is an all-new console RPG. It's not a spin-off or a remake, but a completely new series. With its delicate and somewhat wistful atmosphere, we, we are calling it Project Setna. I cannot share too many details at this point, but the game is already under development and is planned for a global release in 2016. As you can see from the amazing content we presented here today, this year's E3 lineup is the most powerful, unique, and diverse in the history of Square Enix. From acclaimed franchises to exciting IP, new IP, IPs with rich stories creative, characters, and world. Square Enix is bringing phenomenal entertainment to every type of gamer for every viable platform. The amazing content and services created by our global crea creative teams truly represent, uh, represent our goal to help spread happiness across the globe by providing unforgettable experiences. In 2015, you will see a full range of creativity the Square Enix Group has to offer, beginning at this E3. But we will never stop moving forward. We promise you that Square Enix will continue to deliver ultimate entertainment experiences that will amaze and excite gamers. Our powerful content and brilliant creators make that possible. Now, I'd like to welcome everyone from our talented studios and partners from uh, around the world to join me back on stage.
fucking mask. It took better like this too, I don't know why it does that. It's like, uh... Yeah, Flyer Games can be hyped for that game too. Again, we are so thankful for our valued fans and partners joining us here today as we celebrate the gaming industry and introduce you to the future of Square Enix. Please visit, it, visit our booth on the show floor and stay tuned to Square Enix Presents for all of the latest updates and announcements from us. Thank you and have a great EC! This concludes the Square Enix E3 2015 conference. We will be hosting a brief photo opportunity at the stage open to media only. Uh, Alright, I gotta take a nap. Right, conference hall um, to the show that was some pretty cool games, I guess. King of Hearts 3 is good, obviously. New 2 looks really good. Uh, Star Ocean looks cool. I don't know much about Star Ocean, like I said. Nodge and Kane, I think I need to take a nap. I'm very tired. Was this the Goosebumps music or something? What the fuck? It sounds like it, what the fuck? Paper Jam, yeah that looks pretty good too. Uh, I didn't see the Metroid thing. It's kinda hyped there's a Metroid, but at the same time it's like... Not Metroid, so it's like, fuck you. over um uh, new zelda game looks cool i actually like that it's like a new co-op zelda all right sounds good turtles you would have subbed Yeah, turtles on the street very often. I guess what's going on. I, I don't know how I feel about a lot of the Nintendo stuff. Looks cool, but like, uh, uh, I guess we'll see. Let's see what you do. I actually kind of look forward to Mario Tennis as an odd game. I actually enjoy, um... <laughs> I 
I liked Mario Tennis on the N64, so... And Nintendo already went. Alright, I'm really tired. <laughs> I'm gonna go lay down forever. And it's a Suda game. Uh, they really didn't show, like, anything. It's just like, yeah, we're making another game. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I guess. Oh, I want the 30th anniversary Amiibo that looks cool, too. PC Gaming Show. AMD. Devolver. Uh, Square Enix, I guess. I don't know who any of these other people. Blizzard, obviously. The Xbox. Alright, I'm gonna lay down for a bit. I might stream some other video games later. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Sorry I didn't, wasn't available for the Nintendo show. I said I had some things I had to do, apparently. Um, that came up, so... Uh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> 